China's Qin Empire began unraveling after the death of Qin Shi Huangdi. By 206 BC, Qin was no more, and China enters a period of contention between the powers of Chu and Han. In December of 203 BC, the final battle is fought, with Shang Yu of Chu losing to Liu Bang of Han. Liu Bang takes the throne name Gao Zhu, and the Han Empire begins. The empire established under Gao Zhu mirrored in many ways that of the former Qin, and the legal system, along with the commandery system, remained to some extent. Legally, however, the Han system was less harsh than that of the Qin, and they also lowered taxes. The commandery system was also weakened in that while the western part of the empire followed a commandery system, the eastern part of the empire was divided into a number of feudal kingdoms ruled by friends and family of the emperor. These kingdoms had limitations on their autonomy, with the emperor sending advisors for the king and at times determining the succession. The empire's capital was nearby to the old Qin capital and called Qing An, or Perpetual Peace, a perhaps notable contrast with the Qin's full of masculine vigor, Shanyang. Gao Zhu would rule until 195 BC, and under his reign, the relationship between China and the Shangnu solidified into a less violent dynamic. After failing in battle against the great Shangnu leader, Modu Chanyu, the Han and Shangnu came to terms with the Five Bates system, which consisted of China sending over to the Shangnu a number of desirable things, including silk and rice. Perhaps most notably, this system included the sending over of Chinese princesses to the Shangnu leader. Later emperors would squirm under this unpleasant agreement, and eventually war between these two powers would re-arise. Fascinatingly, the bureaucratic testing system that historical China is famous for already seems to have had its start in these early times, as an edict from 196 BC calls for local officials to select choice candidates to be sent to the capital to be tested. It's later, under Emperor Wu, that the Confucian classics become the focus of administrative testing. To what extent the pre-Wu emperors were Confucian-focused is unclear. After Gao Zhu follow three emperors whose reigns are marked by the dominance of Empress Dowager Lu, widow of Gao Zhu. First is Emperor Wei, who rules from 195 to 188 BC, and then Emperor Chan Shao, who ruled from 188 to 184 BC, and finally, Emperor Hu Shao, who ruled until 180 BC. After Hu Shao, power returned from the Lu lineage back to the Liu lineage, and Liu Heng, or Emperor Wen, assumed power. Emperor Wen, a passionate Taoist, ruled from 180 to 157 BC, and some burials of particular note are known from his reign. Three burials arrived to us from the royalty of the Changsha Kingdom at the site of Ma Wang Dui. There's the chancellor, there's his son, from his son's tomb are found many books, and thirdly, there's the mildly obese wife of the chancellor, Lady Dai, whose body arrived to modernity remarkably well preserved. During the Han period as well, jade suits for the buried body are found in some burials of nobility. Late in Wen's reign, outside of China, in 162 BC, the Shangnu campaigned against their fellow largely nomadic Yuecha and sent them fleeing west. The next emperor, picking up 157 BC and ruling until 141 BC, is Emperor Jing. Early in his reign, he made efforts to curtail the powers of the eastern kingdoms, which inspired the commencement of the 154 BC Rebellion of the Seven States, which was successfully squashed. The following emperor, picking up in 141 BC, is arguably the most important. Under Emperor Wu's reign, China expanded significantly, the Silk Road began to flicker into existence, Confucianism came to the fore, and the Shangnu were greatly weakened. You'll recall that the Shangnu had sent the Yuecha packing west some 20 years before Wu's ascent. Early in Wu's reign, around 138 BC, Wu sent an envoy, Zhang Chan, to travel to the Yuecha and see if they'd any interest in joining up with the Han in attacking the Shangnu. Zhang Chan was quickly caught en route as he traveled through Shangnu-controlled territory. 
He remained captive for some 10 years before escaping around 128 BC and heading west to reach the Uecha. By this time, things had changed. 133 BC had already seen the Shangnu attack the Uecha again and send them even farther west, and that year saw Emperor Wu abrogate the Five Bates Treaty and attack the Shangnu. This began a story of westerly conquest into Central Asia, which was followed by conquest in many other directions, including south into Vietnam and northwest into Korea. The wars were very costly, and while by 114 BC the Shangnu had been so weakened as to temporarily render them not a threat to China's northern border, three years prior, 117 BC, saw Wu monopolizing and then auctioning productive and distributive rights for the industries of salt and iron in an effort to raise revenue. With a depleted treasury and increasing efforts in raising revenue, the later years of Wu's reign were filled with unrest. Back to Zhang Chan, who escapes around 128 BC and makes his way to the Uecha, who are now ruling in faraway Bactria. After failing to persuade the Uecha to rejoin the battle against the Shangnu, he stayed and learned a lot about many places unknown to the Chinese prior. After heading back, getting caught by the Shangnu again, and escaping, he arrived back to Chang'an around 125 BC. His reports greatly expanded Wu's vision of and desire for the West. Zhang Chan's mission would be followed by many others, and in due time, caravans were traveling along the Fetal Silk Road, a system that would firm up in the first Silk Roads era of around 100 BC through 300 CE. Wu also extended the Great Wall of China to the west. Some final notes on Wu's reign. Wu was clear in his Confucian sympathies, and in 124 BC he founded the Imperial Institute to train would-be government officials in the Confucian classics. When his court historian died in 107 BC, the court historian's son, the great historian of early China, Sima Chan, takes over. Sima Chan displeases Wu after standing up for a general that had failed in a mission against the Shangnu, and in punishment, Sima Chan is subsequently castrated. Finally, 104 and 102 BC see campaigns to Fergana in the west to acquire horses. The first of these campaigns fails, and the second is a minor success. With the end of Wu's reign, the Western Han's golden age comes to a close. Emperor Zhao follows him, ruling until 74 BC, lowering spending and overseeing a time of peace. Under Emperor Xuan, who ruled from 74 to 48 BC, a Shangnu civil war allowed China to develop an alliance with the southern Shangnu, who would come to serve as a great defense of China's northern frontier from their heretofore fellows, the northern Shangnu. Emperor Wan rules from 48 to 33 BC and is followed by Emperor Cheng, who rules until 7 BC, and his mother, the Empress Dowager of the lineage of Wing, is very influential. The next emperor, Ai, was openly gay and ruled until 1 BC. He's followed by Emperor Ping, who ruled until 6 CE. As of 2 CE, the Han Empire consisted of 83 commanderies and 10 kingdoms. Under Emperor Ping, Wang Ming is given a high position in the military, and in 9 CE, he establishes his own short-lived Xin Dynasty. Among his notable moves to alleviate the stress on the peasants, he abolished debt slavery and made efforts in stabilizing the prices of key commodities. But in 23 CE, his life came to an end in battle against forces led by a member of the Liu extended family, Liu Xu, who would in short order announce the start of the later Han Dynasty, or the Eastern Han.